Okay, and back in the lab, redneck lab, whatever you want to call it, I do have my little specimens that I acquired in my little nature hike. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I already did a spore print, so I have something to just, you know, transition into after I show you how I did this. But I figure I may as well just go ahead and do a quick uh, spore print sample, how I do it at least. Now, all you need to do is make sure that you have a clean vessel. I like these little glass Petri dishes. You can use a styrofoam plate or you can use a piece of uh, aluminum foil. Uh, one thing I like to do if I am trying to determine the color of a mushroom spore print is to take a piece of paper and take a sharpie and then draw a box with black sharpie and then I will uh, straddle the mushroom over that partition so that I can have better contrast for colors to see what the true spore color is. But as far as this procedure goes right here, it's pretty easy. Let me turn this light on right here. It might be a bit of a glare. I do have more samples that I'll be taking better photos of. But you can see these are just really little guys. And whenever you're taking a spore print of particularly like a, a gilled mushroom such as this one, the spores are going to come out, obviously, of the gills. So all you need to do is snip this off, which is the stipe or the stem. We don't need that for a spore print. And then we're going to place this gill side down onto our clean vessel. Now we're not super, super concerned with contaminants right now. There's no way that we can really, at least in the home setting, there's not really any way that we can do this in a like completely sterile process. But I've noticed that whenever you take spore samples like this from wild mushrooms, as long as you're relatively careful and relatively clean with your procedure you normally have pretty good success and you don't have to worry too much about contamination you can always isolate mycelium from a contamination once it's on agar you might have to do a couple different transfers but it's this is a pretty good method right here we're just going to do those three now what i like to do is let me get my watch, my wash bottle here. I just like to put, I don't know why I put that much on. I normally don't put that much on. <laughs> it just kind of squirted out. That's fine. Let me, let me do this. I don't need that much water here. Not for these little guys. But, yep. There. Just one drop on top of each one. Oh, now I remember. I used a syringe for that. That's why the last ones were so much easier. But yeah, you just need a you just need one little drop on each of these mushrooms. You don't want to go too overboard. Be as like be a lot more careful than I was. So now we just need something to cover this. And I also whenever we're dealing with mushrooms of this size they're obviously not going to have a whole lot of extra moisture to bring to the party so I'm actually going to make lemonade out of lemons by sopping up this extra water right here like that, that. I'm just going to wring that out a little bit and then get the rest here there now that's pretty good actually now you can see that, let me be careful, each of these little mushrooms has a single dollop, dollop of water on top of each one. So, that's more than enough to initiate sporing. And as I was saying, whenever I'm dealing with small quantities of mushrooms such as this, I like to 
put just a, a wet balled up piece of paper towel in here to act as kind of like a, a humidor's sponge. You know how like in cigar humidors you have a sponge that you soak in water to provide moisture. Well, this is kind of the same basic premise, the same basic concept. And once that's all set up, you just take something and place it over the top. Obviously, if you're doing this on aluminum foil or a styrofoam plate or a piece of paper or whatever, just you know, like invert a coffee mug or something over this. You don't need to do you don't need to have an elaborate setup like I do. This is just this is just something that I did because like put together because you know this is my hobby. And this is what I like to do. So yeah. And then you just put these off to the side. And uh you know, like, room temperature's fine. You don't want to have it get too hot because then your mushrooms might start deteriorating. Give it about eh, maybe a day. And this is a sample that I prepared a day ago. And we'll get into this here in the next part of this video. So let's do that. All right. And here I have the camera zoomed in a little bit so that you can see. But here is a decent size cap. And underneath is a really, really nice little spore print. It'll focus. As you can see, it's put off a relatively heavy deposit of spores. So I'm going to put that back on for now. I'm going to put the cover back on here because I want to transfer some of these spores onto agar. Now, let me uh, put this back into widescreen mode. Right here in the background, this is just my cheap HEPA filter that I got at Target. As far as air quality goes with one of these, even a small one like this, I can work out in the open here with my Petri dishes and stuff. And I have a pretty low contamination rate. So that this works pretty good. I did wash this down with some uh, cleaning solution, some disinfectant. I have... Hand sanitizer right off to the side, so anytime I feel like I need to sanitize my hands, I can. And I think we're good to go. So let me get things set up, and then we'll get to it. Here we go. I'm going to sanitize my hands for this part. I am going to put on a mask. So I do apologize if my speech and pronunciation and emphasizations become a little hindered because of this. I'll try to still speak as concisely as I can. There we go. That's not too bad. Since I touched that, let me re-sanitize my hands. Okay. So these are still covered up, right? You want to keep anything that you took a spore sample of that you intend on transferring to agar or whatever medium you're going to grow it on to, you know, propagate them onto. You want to keep those uh, as sealed off from the outside world as possible to avoid contamination. Remember, whenever it comes to mushrooms, contamination and avoiding contamination, I should say, is absolutely everything. So there's many different ways to do this. This is one way that I like. I just like to use these sterile cotton tipped wood applicators. I get these off of Amazon. You can get a I think it's like a hundred of them for around $16, if that. They're pretty pretty inexpensive and I've never had any poor experiences with these, so we want to do this as quickly as possible. Now it's very simple. We want to, this is the biggest one, I'm going to just take that out and set it there. Wipe the cotton tip all over your spores, cover that back up, and then very quickly deposit them onto the surface of the agar. Set that aside. Take the second one and we'll take some from this right here. Let's do that. You can see that okay? Yeah. And then do the same thing. And I'm probably going to transfer to five petri dishes. Let's try taking some from 
this really little guy right there because he's pretty cute. Nice. Get another cotton tip applicator. Probably have to hold this still. And just scrape some of these spores off. You don't have to get every single bit. And then just do some little swirls onto the surface of the agar. The more you do, the better your chances of getting a successful culture are. Let me move that back up in the frame. Okay. This one's pretty good right here. Now, obviously, you could do this with uh, some uh, sterilized water and a syringe. You could make like a spore syringe out of this and do it that way. But this is the down and dirty method, and it works pretty well most time. Most of the time, it does. Now we're just gonna do that. Do that. This can be kind of like a, a free for all right here. I'm just gonna rub these all over the tip of this applicator. Okay. I'm just gonna put a big X right here. Good. Now that's all of those. I can set this off to the side. Don't need these little guys anymore, so I'm just gonna kind of flick them off into the garbage move that over and now all you got to do is label these I usually just do the common names and because I know what it is I'm not like submitting this for anything like scientific or anything this is just for my own curiosity and hobbies but I don't know if you can see but there is an X there on the agar and hopefully with any luck we'll have some mycelium start to sprout from those spores that we deposited onto the surface of these now we're probably going to deal with contaminations I'll show you how to do that in another video that right there is pretty much the easiest way that I found that you can successfully transfer transfer spores from the spore print onto agar and like I said, yeah, you'll deal with contamination here and there, but it's pretty easy to, uh, you know, isolate a culture once it's on agar. I'll incubate it about 82 degrees, 80, 82 degrees Fahrenheit, and we'll just see how it looks in three days, and I'll just keep making videos about it. A few little, a few key points and a few interesting little facts about these little mushrooms is the fact that they can withstand being dried out completely and then once it rains or the humidity becomes high enough again they will actually rehydrate and they can continue to put spores out these little fruiting bodies can continue to put spores out for up to three weeks with adequate uh, moisture content a couple other things which I think is pretty neat right here these are distantly related to fly agaric mushrooms which if you know anything about mushrooms fly agaric mushrooms are the type of mushrooms that Mario uses to you know become Super Mario or if he gets a green mushroom he becomes well he gets an extra life and so they're distantly related to the Mario mushrooms I just thought that was kind of funny as far as edibility goes, in case anyone was wondering, they're not considered toxic or anything from what I've read. They're just not, you know, like, worth it. Because they're so, for one, they're just absolutely tiny. So you'd need a pile of them. But also, like, they have a very, like, if, you're, if you handle one of these, they're very, very, like, robust. I don't think that... <laughs> chewing them would be a pleasant experience I really don't but yeah that's how I do a spore print okay and a quick update 
to show what the mycelium for pinwheel mushrooms look like. I did take the uh, parafilm off of this one so I can get a better shot. But you can see these grew really, really well. They are completely colonized. These are the mycelial growth of pinwheel mushrooms, Marismius rotula. And now, I'm not going to include it in this video, I'll do it in a separate video. But I'm going to see if I can fruit these and have them put off little tiny mushroom fruiting bodies. Because they're so small, they should grow right off this agar no problem they don't they don't need a whole lot of nutrient Let me turn the flash on my camera there that way you can see a little bit better detail yeah that's really all there is to it just keep at it and sometimes they take a while to take off but once they do they really grow okay thanks for watching